a mess with my Trump sign. I know, I see that. Lord okay. have mercy. We it's are, your show. You can make a mess if you want to. Well, it says the Sherry Show, and it's my opinion, and mm -hmm. my opinion sometimes mm -hmm. don't kind of set with everybody, but right. it is what it is. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I enjoy what I do. I love my life. I don't like some things going on in the world today. No, I don't either. You as the Bible lady yesterday pulled off something that just might not have been Christian. You took a video of me acting like a fool in a store down in Marietta, and now everybody knows that I go out of my 50 mile radius. Well, occasionally. You have caught me dead in the act. Yeah. Well, uh, originally it was because varsity was in the Yes, in the we equation. might have a thing about the varsity, but then we ended up doing something better than bar varsity. We did, uh, we did. But the chair I was purchasing, yes, you're going to sit in. Yes, so we went down there so to test drive the I, chair. Yeah, you needed yes. to test drive it, and so yes, that, that and was the I purpose. got stuck in a recliner she did. She because the recliner would not <laughs> let me undo it, and it was very, very crazy uh, because I was going. That was funny. Oh my God, I can't get out of this chair. Oh, she was I can't not get kidding. I thought, oh, <laughs> silly. Yeah. No, no she's really stuck. I'm stuck because the chair wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't back and wouldn't forward, and I was like, "What do I do? Crawl out of this mess?" It was a trick but chair. Yeah. It was a trick chair, and then he said, "You have to lay all the way back." <gasps> so I had to lay all the way back in that chair. Mm -hmm. But we did it. We it was made an adventure. a trip down to the town center area, and I can just tell y'all, it was not quite as crazy as I thought it would be. Because now, will you agree? Just this one time, concede. Yes. We got there faster on the big road. I don't like the big road, yes we did. Every exit, every exit. Let's to get off here, we'll go to the back roads. I'm like, <laughs> no. I did, I did, I did. You know, I just pulled a rank. What could I, I was driving. You know, if you're driving, you, you get You know, picked. I'm a non-drinking, non-smoking, fairly decent Christian woman, cuss a little, have a little opinion to myself. A little. But, but I love the back roads. She does. And I did, I rode all the way to Town Center Mall on the big road. Mm -hmm. And I did it, I did it. Mm -hmm. I, I became a little unnerved at Saved times. about an hour, yeah. Yeah, it did, it did. But then we came back my way and I loved it because you get to see more when you come to the back road. This is true. So we're gonna And suggest. we weren't on a time thing then. We no, we didn't yeah. have a time thing going on. We just wanted to beat the traffic was on. Oh, we wanted to beat traffic and traffic, oh, traffic, traffic. On you know, if anything good has come from COVID, working at home has kind of solved part of the traffic problem in Atlanta because a lot of people are still working at home. Mm -hmm. And we know the Royston plant down in Jasper is still doing every other week. Right. People are going into work. Yeah. And Royston has the Hartwell, Georgia plant, and then they have the Royston plant, they have the Elberton. And, and they're all, you know, everybody's kind of doing their thing to work some at home. Mm -hmm. and Except for the increase, the, the exponential increase in divorces being yes, filed, yes, you know. Yeah. It's a good thing, yeah. Yeah, a few, and let's talk about 911. If you and your spouse get in a fight now, and you need to call somebody, they're defunding our police officers. <sighs> oh, that gee, is disgusting. Please. I think more money to the police officers, more money to the military. Take the money from those guys running that pig skin that are making, what, $14 million a year to run up and down the field in them little white tidies. It's crazy. So so we gotta change America. And we got. I think we've got the man here with us today who could do that. Hey, sounds good. Sounds good. He's a Christian. Mm -hmm. He's like a conservative. That like that part. He's military. I like that part. That's why I called him. He's military. I think that Congress and the Senate should be loaded down with military because you know what? They have balanced a budget. Uh, not only that, they've written a check that a lot of people are not willing to Absolutely. write. Absolutely. And they put their lives on the line. And that Every earns day. my yep. respect and should earn everybody's respect. Yep. And people have lost respect for just about everything, mm -hmm. our country included. Yep. And when I hear Congresswomen from Minnesota. Don't talk uh -huh. about that woman, I'm gonna throw up. You know, how is said. it possible, how oh. is it possible that someone can speak sedition, 
out loud on the floor of Congress and not be held accountable? Well, she shouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, you know, she to me, she shouldn't be there in the first place. To me, those words are treasonous. Yep. I mean, yep. when you openly call for the destruction of the systems which we call our Constitution and Bill of Rights, yeah, uh, need to be um, undone, destroyed for Crazy. oppression. Crazy. She comes from. Okay, I'll stop. Don't, yeah. We were planning a trip to D.C. We had it all worked out. We were going to go on the train. We were going to Hall County, Georgia. We were going to get on the train. We were going to D.C. And then some of those women up there made me mad, and I decided that we don't know anybody in D.C. that would sign my bond to get me out of jail. I don't have the cash. So right. we decided yeah. not to go. Mm -hmm. We just mm -hmm. decided that it would not be a good situation to but put me in. But it's not below Canton. It's above Canton. <laughs> it's so. above Canton. But we just... America needs to get angry. We need to step up to the angry. plate, and we have you seen my Facebook page? Yes, and she's I still vicious. haven't been taken down. Yes, see, that's why the Bible lady keeps it clean. Right, we don't drop no f bombs. <laughs> we don't do that. No, yeah, yeah. we're very sweet and kind in yeah. our castigation of the like other side. Yep, yeah, yep. And we have to do that. We have got to step up. We've got to support our military. We have to support our police officers. I have a picture of Daddy in his uniform as he was a beat cop walking. Walking a beat in Atlanta. Can you imagine that? Uh, well, yeah, because it still happens today. Sure Think does. about Paul. Yes. Think yes. about what Paul in, in, yes. in New York. That The first thing that came to my mind with all this defund the police crap, excuse me, Bible lady said crap, <laughs> um, was Paul. Yeah. And, and what yeah. those policemen and those first responders, those firemen, uh, chill bumps are going up and down oh, my I arms as I have hundreds of pictures that Paul brought me of actual photographs from 9-11. These are not edited, these are not, this is actual photographs. And I said, if you look at that and you live in America, you need to get your crap together and you need to support America. You know, one thing, I may have had a little rant on my Facebook this morning. She Possibly. did, and I shared it. Did you? Good. I had the nerve. Thank you. I shared it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. people watch what's going on <coughs> in the, well, if they watch at mm -hmm. all, and they turn the channel. They watch the news and they turn the channel, and it's like, they think they're watching a Netflix episode, yeah. you know, or the or the latest television show, and this is real. We have the National Guard in our streets in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Hello. Should have been there a long time ago. Well, should have been before that poor child. Did you see that mother's right. face? Oh yes. If you saw yes. that mother's yes. face that lost her eight-year-old child, yep. and that did not move you, something something's mm -hmm. yeah. wrong. Yep. Because it should not have taken. That mm -hmm. long. It mm -hmm. should have never happened in the first no. place. No. The fact that a group of people mm -hmm. think that it's acceptable in any way, shape, or form to congregate armed, get on a microphone, and taunt and try to call out mm -hmm. your what they perceive as their opposition. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's not their opposition. And one thing that they may not know, good old boys, they hunt from up high. Mm -hmm. You know, they're yeah. used to going into the... We're proud the, to be from the country. They go up into a deer stand relatives. and yeah. they're camouflaged and they wait. Yeah. And they carry guns. So do, you, guns. do you really... I mean, they knew they were not going to be engaged. They would not have stood out there in a group, line after line after line, with their guns if they thought for a minute they were truly going to be attacked. They mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. And he, here's the good news as well are our, our good old boys mm -hmm. they know better too mm -hmm. they know they're being baited for uh, they want to start they my humble opinion mm -hmm. the marxists mm -hmm. the marxists who are where did they get the money for their guns oh i bet i know where did i they bet get who, the money for those the uniforms checks. yeah how do they you know they uh, good old boys have jobs they work they have families to take care of they can't spend every day sitting around working themselves up into a fury mm -hmm. dressing alike mm -hmm. you know uh, another reason they didn't engage is they probably were at work you know exactly what I'm that's what i started to say in one of the last elections, they said, oh, the Republicans are not turning out in high numbers. No, not until after 5 o'clock because we're right. at work. We we're have work. things we to do. We have to wait and vote yeah. between 5 and 7. So. But there, there's something very nefarious going on that we're not seeing. And I think the, the light is beginning see to this? shine. See this? See this? <laughs> see this? Everybody needs to support our government, support our military, support our president. We need to get behind those people that are going to Congress, going to the Senate, that are actually going to do a job that they are paid for, and they're not going to make $170,000, $80,000 a year, whatever they make. They're not going to come home with 
$129 million in their checking account after 30 years in service. Because I don't care how you do the math, ain't no way to do that. Well, you can't do it. Put on your list over there. List mm, of questions. Let's see. Yeah, there's some. Uh, I think that's on there. Yeah. Waste in government, capital gains, going back to school, accountability of officials, term limits, lobby money, party leadership, and all the games they play with you, and small business. Do you know that small businesses in America can overthrow any election because 50 million small businesses? You got your husband, you got your wife, that's 100 million votes. What do you do? Right. You support small business. Imagine that. And, and we, as we talked in the car on the way here this morning about the lobbying money in government, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, and I'm not calling out one side or the other because it, both sides are guilty right, of it. Right. How many people are owned by China, we'll find out. But when the lobbyists come in and convince my representative to vote for something mm -hmm. with a campaign donation, mm -hmm. they're not buying his vote, they're buying my vote. Mm -hmm. And my vote was not for sale. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think until that is addressed, <coughs> you know, the uh, no fault of anybody currently, particularly our president, this has been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, in Cherokee County, I was involved for a while, and I just, I couldn't, my conscience would not allow me to stay involved, not that people who are involved do not have a conscience, mm -hmm. it was just I couldn't do it because I could not, uh, I just couldn't do it. Let's just leave it there because I know a lot of good people who are in government well, and that are in leadership. Well, I was going to admit two fatal mistakes on my part of voting today, but I'm just not willing to give it up. But I voted for two Republicans that I am ashamed, disgusted, discouraged, Yeah, you know, I can't believe I voted for those two people. They. Uh, uh, uh. Neither one of them won, thank God. But one of them is up in Washington now, and he is just causing all kinds of crisis and problems. And and he's, you know, he is the idiot that he was when I voted for him. And I wish I hadn't. But we learn by our mistakes. Well, we learn know, by our mistakes. And regarding this, this the, the whole racism thing. I, the very first man who was ever in the Republican primary that could be voted for. I voted for him. That mm -hmm. was Alan Keyes. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then when Herman Cain uh, ran, mm -hmm. I voted for Herman. And it had nothing to do Your with Your vote was better Hill. than the one I did. Well, I know, but see, we, <laughs> we, 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 you have to go with, you know, it's either who you end up with on your side or the other side, and I'm never gonna waste a vote. There you go. But again, if, if people could just understand this is not about your skin color. This is about what you believe in your head and in your heart. Both of those men got my vote in the Republican primaries in those years because of their policies and their platforms mm -hmm. and because they were conservatives. And they were the most conservative mm -hmm. She's of a bit the group. Conservative. Yeah. Tiny bit. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna take a commercial break and when you come back. I don't live in Gilmer County, but if I did, I could vote for this man. He, sadly, he is running somewhere that I don't live. We brought him on here because I love small businessmen who stand up for their rights. What I a story. love what a the story. military. I love the idea that he had three tours of duty traveling a place I would never want to go. And, and as you know, we think about this, he made this choice. He wasn't drafted. He just went in and did his job and he did it for a whole lot less money than these football players are making. So you're gonna get to meet somebody that I hope you will get to know and you will do a little research and then you will possibly um, ask the right questions and maybe cast your vote for him. So we'll be back in just a few minutes and we're gonna meet a really good guy who is uh, pretty straight up structured, isn't he? I he's, like him so he's far. He's pretty straight up structured. We'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs>
Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome Blizzard Cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. In 2013, a fellow Northeast Georgian, Andrew Clyde, experienced IRS abuse in the form of civil asset forfeiture firsthand. I'm Andrew Clyde, combat veteran, small business owner, and Republican candidate for Congress. When the IRS unconstitutionally seized $940,000 from my armory, I took them to court and won. But when I found out that other innocent Americans were losing their small businesses to the same IRS abuse, I decided this was war. I went to Washington to testify against the IRS, and with the help of Congressman Doug Collins, we won again. On July 1, 2019, President Trump signed our bill into law as part of the Taxpayers First Act, ensuring the corrupt IRS never did this to another American again. I'm Andrew Clyde, Republican candidate for Congress. I approve this message because when it comes to protecting our freedoms, you have to know how to fight and win. y'all okay we just got cameras sitting here everywhere and we're welcoming a, a guy that I just I honed in on this guy because I saw that he was fighting for small business thank you last year you really went to work and you did something that amazed me as a small business owner I would never have had the nerve to do what you've done and you have tackled so much stuff in just a year and then all of a sudden you're running for Congress how in the world did you get there and what in the world inspired you uh, you mean what, uh, what happened to you that made you say, oh, maybe I'll help the small <laughs> businessmen? Okay, all right. Um, well, it was a, quite a story. Uh, I own a firearms industry, a mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. It's called Clyde Armory. And, and people who, in this area, carry firearms. So uh, we're with you. Absolutely. We're with you. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love my business. It's a constitutional business. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our motto is we enable individual participation in the preservation of liberty mm -hmm. because that's what a federal firearms licensee does. Mm -hmm. You know, it enables uh, a person to to access their rights to th of the Second Amendment. All right. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I was uh, just going on doing my business, selling guns, uh, enjoying life. Uh, I have a great business. After three tours of duty in the military. That's correct, after, okay. after three tours of duty in the military. Um, and um, the IRS uh, came in and confiscated $940,000 from my uh, company's business and um, from my bank account. And You didn't and know it, they just I had no zapped idea. it, they, they got it. They came in on Friday, April the 12th, and um, oh you know, three days before tax day, and took $940,000 out of my business. Uh, back then, that was right after President Obama had just been reelected. Mm -hmm. And so there was kind of a, a surge of firearm sales mm -hmm. in the industry. Right. And so most of what we had on the shelf was gone. Mm -hmm. And so it was all in the bank, you know, waiting for new inventory to come in mm -hmm. so I could pay for it. Right. And so the IRS came in and um, they took my money through civil asset forfeiture. And uh, they accused me had of... Had you done anything wrong? Nothing. I had done absolutely nothing wrong. They Can you explain what civil asset for, uh, forfeiture is, or it's supposed to be? Well, c civil asset forfeiture is when they come in and they take your assets. They don't charge you with a crime, okay? But they just take your assets and, um, and then, and that's it. They just take them. Had you not yeah. had cash in the bank, what would they have done? 
they couldn't have done anything if I didn't have cash in the bank. Uh, so you, you were know. operating a business correctly. That's you right. were making the, money, about to pay for new inventory, right. and they wiped you out. Right, they wiped me out. And, and it all has to do with what's called structuring. I had no idea what structuring was at the time. And it means that um, when you consistently deposit less than $10,000 in cash in the bank, mm -hmm. all right, then um, when you deposit over 10000 then the uh, bank is supposed to make a report to the IRS. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, when you consistently deposit less than ten thousand dollars, then they think that you're trying to avoid that report. Mm -hmm. All right. So they came in and seized the money that they thought was being avoided. You know. Uh, um, but it's in the bank. But it. But it's, it's in the not bank. It's being avoided. No. <laughs> well, it, it's also part of your tax return. Oh my all gosh. right. So it's legally earned, and it's being reported on a tax return. They audited me for four years from two thousand and. 9, 10, 11, and 12, and uh, both my personal tax return and my b corporate tax return, mm -hmm. and they found absolutely nothing wrong. And they admitted that. They told me that in writing. And they, they told me when my attorney and my accountant met with them, they said, we acknowledge that um, Mr. Clyde has legally earned this money and that it has been properly reported, but we're not going to give it back anyway. <gasps> oh, my gosh. And what they, so they, they offered me a deal. They offered... A deal. A deal, right. A, a deal. deal. A deal. <laughs> they offered to give me um, uh, $600,000 back if I would forfeit $325,000 to them. And I was floored by that request because to me, that's extortion. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. nothing but government Any way you extortion. Look at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, so I fought them in court. I um, <clears throat> took them to court. The judge saw it my way. You know, thank goodness for Judge Clay Land. Mm -hmm. You know, in the middle mm -hmm. district of Georgia. Mm -hmm. But um, he saw it our way. He saw a constitutional issue with the problem mm -hmm. you know, as, as, as being an, an issue. And um, so uh, I eventually won my case. Well, he forced them to give me back half of my money, which mm -hmm. allowed the business to continue on, all right, for a, for a few months. But, um, but it took five months for them to uh, be forced to give my money back. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, I finally got it back uh, right about September of 2013. And then during that whole process, I found out that this had been happening to other small businesses and other individuals across the country. That's crazy. They would take your money and then they would simply offer uh, a deal to give you back two thirds of your money if they would keep a third of it. And so I thought, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Um, you know, as a military officer, I understand battle space. Mm -hmm. And I knew that. You know, the government, the th this three-letter agency called the Internal Revenue Service and the Department of Justice, which was hand-in-hand -hand with them, mm -hmm. all right? Um, they and had the, the DOJ at that time under Obama's That's reign. correct. Okay. The DOJ under, yes. under Obama at the time. Yeah. You know, they had the upper hand against me, oh. mm -hmm. all right, in, yeah. in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so I got back what I could. It cost me $150,000 to fight them. Legal fees. In, in legal fees <coughs> and a $50,000 forfeiture to them, okay? Oh my gosh. But I got, I got $890,000 of the 940 back, all right? And then I realized that, um, that uh, as a military officer, you know, I understand battle space. And so this, to agree to a forfeiture was my tactical retreat. Mm -hmm. And then I decided that I was gonna find another battlefield so I went to Congress and I testified before Congress. Um, I told them my story first. When I saw your that, I was like, mm -hmm. that's why I called you. I well, was well, like, you. oh my gosh, thank this you. is it. But um, they, um, they heard my story initially and then they asked me to come testify mm -hmm. against the IRS commissioner. And so in February of 2015, I was given the opportunity, myself and two other witnesses, to testify against Commissioner Koskinen uh, you know, who was oh, Obama's right, right hand right. Um, in the IRS. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Congressman Peter Roskam, the chairman of the committee, forced Commissioner, Ros uh, uh, Commissioner Koskinen to formally apologize to us, which was phenomenal. You know, wow. imagine getting an apology like from money. That right. is like money. Did you describe you know? his face for us? <laughs> it was not happy. No, no. no. It was wow. not happy. Oh. Um, but, you know, an apology to me is great but that doesn't get you back what you've, what lost. you've lost. It doesn't mm -hmm. restore the, all the people mm -hmm. who had had their money seized sure. and stolen, stolen from them. Right, stolen, stolen. literally from, stolen. From them by their own right. government. And, and so um, Koskinen agreed to change their regulations, okay? Well, if you can change regulations one way, you can change it right back. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
I told Congress, I said, that's not good enough. Changing regulations is not good enough. You need to actually change the law. Mm -hmm. So they came up with a law and they, and they called it um, the RESPECT Act. It stands for Restraining Excessive Seizure of Property through the Exploitation of Civil Asset Forfeiture Tools Act. And then they named it after the three of us who testified <laughs> against the IRS, who, had, who, who were willing to put our, our um, uh, lives, our businesses, our reputations on the line and challenge the IRS and testify against them. So they call it the Clyde Hirsch Sowers Respect Act. My gosh. Um, so then in 2000, and, um, in, the two, in the 114th Congress, uh, it passed unanimously in the Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, uh, but it has to pass in the Senate too, and it never got a vote in the Senate. So then in the 115th Congress, it passed again unanimously but it didn't get a vote in the Senate then either. Well, so what's, what's wrong the, with the Senate? Was the Senate not Republican controlled at that time? Um, I... Well, regardless, it should have regar you know, you know, got out of committee it, it, and it, onto it, the floor. It, it, yeah. it should have, it yeah. should have. Well, in the 116th Congress, Congressman Doug Collins was the one who actually became the sponsor of the bill, mm -hmm. all right? And it passed unanimously in the House then and he worked with uh, Senator Grassley and Senator Isaacson, <laughs> and it passed in the Senate in June of last year, 2019, wow. and President Donald J. Trump signed it into law. Yay! <laughs> I'm getting cold chills, I'm telling you. So there uh, is a law on the books with you and the other gentleman, I'm assuming gentleman, right, gentlemen, your name's right. on it. That's correct. That is phenomenal. Right. Thank you, uh, yeah. thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Was that um, forfeiture clause, I guess mm -hmm. you would call it, because it wasn't a law, was it? It was a clause in the IRS rule book? It was, it was, a, regu it was a regulation, it was the way they, they interpreted the current law. Gotcha. See, the current law actually did not make a distinction between legal money and illegal money, and so the IRS went after the easiest money they could find. Because mm -hmm. it was originally for drug dealers. That's correct. Right. Mafia, it was for illegal money. Like a RICO right, kind right, of thing. Right. Is that it, correct? It was a way to track um, illegal money deposited in the banking system, mm -hmm. in the financial system. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but if it's all about the money, you just go after you the money go. if you're at the IRS. Yeah. And was yeah. there bonus based on how much they squeezed out of the populace <laughs> every year? I don't know if it was or wow. not, but um, wow. but I know that they went after legal money because it was easy to find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that for a fact. And how long did it take you from start to finish? Six years. Six years. 2013 until 2019. Is your wife okay? <laughs> how many people would have she given is. I've lived in a stressful situation yeah. with going to court before. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is. Uh, it, it gave me a new appreciation for the phrase, it took an act of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I love the idea that as a small businessman, you fought and you won. Mm -hmm. I love the idea as military, you fought and you won. You mm -hmm. came home, you're Thank you. all together. And, and we didn't talk about the Charlie Daniels project, but, but Charlie Daniels, mm -hmm. wonderful musician, lost his life this week. And Cole, can we put up that graphics? Um, if, if, you know, if you love Charlie Daniels music and everybody wants to support him, there's a project that he funded that supports our military after they come home and we need to support our military after they come home. When yes, you go to Congress, how important is you to support our military that is coming home? Because our military is coming home, and do you know who Joey Jones is from here in Dalton, Georgia? Um, no, He's no, no, no. double amputee, boss, oh. lost, lost okay. both legs, um, fighting in Iraq. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful man. Mm -hmm. You will get to vote for him for president if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> he right. is amazing. He will probably be our next Georgia president. He's such an amazing guy. But you came back whole and everything's yes, I did. great. I did. How many guys didn't? Many, quite a few. Yeah, and when you get to Congress, it's got to be on the top of your list to help those guys, mm -hmm. to, to get them the, the mental support they need. Because mm -hmm. you come home and, and we mm -hmm. talk about, you know, you've had a bad day and you, oh, I've had a bad day. They've had a lot of bad days. Mm -hmm. They have. And we need to support them. So we it's, certainly do. it's so important that we support those guys. And then the Journey Home Project is the one way that Charlie Daniels did that. And it's giving back. There's, um, y'all, if you, if you want to Google this oh, and find Charlie. out information about it, the Journey Home Project is, is Charlie's way of giving back. He has passed and gone on to be with the Lord. And, and if you want to give back, give back in his memory 
and just make a donation to the Journey Home Project. So. I just saw a commercial for that organization mm -hmm. that he and several other celebrities had right. spoken and it's like, right. oh, we need to give back to our military. Yeah. Now, when, when you came home, three tours of duty, um, you go back to work, you're a small businessman, you create the American dream. Yes, ma'am, Which I did. becomes the American nightmare. Yes. Okay, you're, okay. A, de you're a deacon in your church. Only for six years, yeah. though. You're, you're a deacon in your church, your daddy's a preacher, you got a beautiful family, and then all of a sudden, you are at war again, yes. trying to be elected to Congress because you're up against propaganda by this and lies about this and da-da-da-da, mm -hmm. and you just... How tough is it to run for Congress today? It is very difficult to run for Congress today. Um, you know, this COVID-19, uh, mm -hmm. Wuhan virus uh, issue, uh, I was the very last one to enter the race, mm -hmm. uh, the very end of February, and um, the Wuhan virus basically hit two weeks later. Right. So everything was canceled, every meeting was canceled, every opportunity to go meet mm -hmm. the people was canceled. Mm -hmm. So we basically had to reach out um, by radio, by television, you know, by phone calls, by sending mailers out I to folks. I had to chase him down. <laughs> I've been trying to get him since May. I've been sending messages. and Because I said, when I saw what you did for small businessmen, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to continue what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I am certainly trying to. Um, but we have, a, we have a great message. Uh, we have a message of uh, um, pro-life mm -hmm. um, from uh, conception to natural death. You know, it, it's the way God talks about life in the My Bible. My husband went to heaven, but I got to keep his mama. She's 100 and a half years old. That's amazing. And I can tell you about the dignity of life. That's right. At the end of life. That's right. <laughs> My mom on Monday turned 89. And you your know. parents celebrated how many years marriage? 66 years of marriage. 66 years. On June the 19th. Wow. They sure did. My wow. daddy's 94. Oh my gosh. My daddy's a preacher and uh, raised me as a preacher's kid. You and know. how cool to see their son going to Congress. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. we believe you're going. Yeah, well, you're, going. You. you're going. You're going. You're going. We thank can't you. vote for him though. No, we can't vote for him. But, but we, we can, can encourage others. That's yeah, right. we can say good things about him. Yeah. Now, if people want to talk to you, mm -hmm. are you willing to come out and, and talk and da da da? I know we're going to have something here in a week, about a week. They're mm -hmm. going to have a little event here, um, have a debate, I think, here at ETC. But if, if people want to personally talk to you, can they just pick up the phone and call you? They can. They can. I have a card here. Mm -hmm. it, it's got my mobile number on it. Yep. It's 706-338-2944. Um, and I give that to basically anybody who wants it. Um, and I talk to folks. They can... Uh, when he uh, got here today, he was on the phone. He was on the phone <laughs> a lot. He's on the phone a lot because he's talking to people. Well, y'all would get along great. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. You can send an email to me at andrew at clydeforcongress.com. And uh, we'll respond to that email. And if you want a, a sign or something like that for your yard, or if you want to go on our Facebook page. There are a lot of signs here in Gilmer County. I've there seen are. Them. Yeah, I've seen them. Yes, I like that. Are. I have a uh -huh. quick question. Mm -hmm. Why are the district numbers not on signs anymore? I've noticed that most of, if not all, of mm -hmm. the congressional signs, mm -hmm. it does not identify the district. Because I called her and I said, can we vote for him? And she said, I don't know what district he's in. So she did the research and found out you're in the ninth. We can't vote for you because we live in Cherokee County. Mm. So that's two votes she would have gotten. Mm. But Well, on the border counties, it probably makes sense um, for the districts. But um, um, but for those that are within, you know, not because a border Because one county, county would have right. so many different mm -hmm, districts mm -hmm. inside of it. Yeah, like okay. Clark County has part in the ninth and part in the tenth, um, you know. So does Forsyth County, part of the dis part of the counties in the ninth district, and parts in the in, in another district. Mm -hmm. But um, but I do have actually some signs. Some of my larger signs say uh, Georgia's congressional uh, ninth district. And for you bulldog fans, he's got a bulldog tag on his car. I'll just tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was him when we pulled up because I saw that bulldog. Yeah, because she said that he's and here. I'm and I'm a graduate said, of the that? University That's of right. Georgia. That's yeah. right. And that Cla ain't gonna hurt you a bit. <laughs> no, class of '99. Got my master's degree from the University of Georgia. Actually, built the business plan for Clyde Armory, wow. my current business. Um, while I was at the University of Georgia getting my master's degree in How business. How about that? Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, did you know all those years back that's what you wanted to do? No, I was, didn't. I really no? didn't. No, I started life as a Navy officer. Okay. Um, uh, got my commission from the University of Notre Dame um, through the ROTC unit there. 
and uh, then went. We're sitting um, here with royalty. <laughs> you know, We're Don's, sitting here with royalty. Don's son went to Notre Dame, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, they don't have a great record against uh, uh, against my, my graduate school university, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but then from there went to the uh, supply corps school here in Athens to get my designation as an aviation supply officer, logistics officer. Then I went to a fighter squadron, Strike Fighter 161 in Lamore, California, and then on the USS Enterprise aircraft carrier. Now, how cool is that? Uh, yeah, that was yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. um, went to the USS Midway, the aircraft carrier wow. uh, deployed overseas in Yokosuka, Japan, wow. uh, spent a tour of duty there, came back uh, to Naval Air Station Jacksonville in Florida for a tour of duty there during Desert Shield and Desert Storm, mm -hmm. right, during that conflict, mm -hmm. and then uh, deployed on the USS Saratoga out of Mayport, Florida. Wow, um, you've been on all the famous I, I, ones. I have yeah. been both sides. Yeah. Uh, I have been uh, deployed Westpac and uh, Mediterranean, and then uh, finally came back to Athens to teach aviation logistics to those new guys coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, I had all this experience that uh, they wanted me to teach aviation logistics. So I taught aviation logistics at the Navy Supply Corps School in Athens, and that's what brought me home here. And then um, left active duty and went and got my master's degree at the University of Georgia. And stayed in the reserves. What are you doing in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> Run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, um, you know, running for Congress means that you do love America because you want to yes, make a difference. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. What do you think about these flags behind us? Is there something going on in America today that you want to tell people, don't mess with our flag, support our flag? Uh, absolutely. You know, we have the greatest country in the world. Um, you know, I've been to 41 countries of the world, and I will tell you that when I came back from my um, Westpac deployment, um, I came back to the United States, came into the airport, now it was California, okay, but it was a little different California mm -hmm. then than it is now, mm -hmm. all right? This was um, uh, in, in the early 90s, right? And I actually got down and kissed the ground mm -hmm. because for me, wow. it was so emotional to come back to the United States, mm -hmm. a country of liberty and a country of freedom, which I did not see in any country of the world any other country of the world. Yeah. We are the most exceptional country and it is because we have freedom, we have an amazing constitution, mm -hmm. we have a flag that represents that. Um, I will never kneel for an anthem or the, the, the time I kneel is when I pray. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, that's when I kneel. But I will stand for that flag, I will salute that flag, you know, I will defend that flag in every part of life. Yeah, yeah, and that we are losing it and, it and it absolutely, I don't even know where it was, but did you see the group of people burning the flags the other day? I think it was on the 4th of July and they were showing their independence by burning mm -hmm. our flag and I just sat there and bawled like a baby. Yeah. Because that is, that is our pride is in our country. Mm -hmm. where, where do you think things, They have lost it. Where do you yeah. think it was lost? Where do you think, what happened? Mm. I mean, where did this attitude come from? Because it's, it's happened in a, a short span of time. I was telling you, my, my sons mm -hmm. are 30 mm -hmm. and 33 years old, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they were raised by a very conservative <coughs> set of parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess peer pressure. Uh, one went into the Marines, one mm -hmm. went to college, but he didn't stay there. Um, what happened, do you think? I think it's a heart problem, you know? Um, people don't have a, um, uh, a background anymore in, in um, religious liberty. In, uh, in a lot of them don't go to church. They don't mm -hmm. worship God anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when God is not the center of people's lives, then, um, then them, they themselves are, mm -hmm. okay? And at that point, then people do what they think they wanna do. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes anarchy. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's the path we're heading. And that's the wrong path. Um, you know, our, our, uh, our Constitution was not made for a people that it's wholly inadequate for a, for a people that does not have a strong moral and religious mm -hmm. upbringing and background. So it's gonna be tough. But Absolutely. Well, do you think it's reasonable if, because I, know I'm, I follow Jesus, I know not She's everybody does. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Good um, for you, so and do I. And there's plenty of people that I get along with just fine. Right. They either, I wouldn't even call them atheists, maybe agnostic, mm -hmm. maybe just really doesn't think mm -hmm. about it because mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't seem to be central to the conversation like it was, you know, when, when I was a kid growing up. 
Um, but for, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think legality here, if the rules are written, mm -hmm. there should not be a problem enacting laws to enforce the rules mm -hmm. that are already written. Mm -hmm. If your point of view or your religion is, if that's not acceptable to you, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But because we've already written our rules, mm -hmm. and they, I believe, are, I don't know if you know who David Barton is with Wall Builders, mm -hmm. has a great uh, organization that teaches history. He mm -hmm. can show you the documents with the Founding Fathers' signature, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. He's got it in right. a yeah. museum. It's there, let's not get and, rid of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were founded on Chris, Judeo Christian principles. That's correct. And this country is only successful when we stick to the rules, That's just correct. like football. That's if correct. you go out there and start making up your own rules in the middle, mm -hmm. nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's part of the problem? Is it, you know, why would it be a problem to enforce our rules as originally written? Well, think about traffic and traffic flow. What would happen if you would take all the traffic lights away mm -hmm. and all the stop signs away, mm -hmm. you know? Um, then traffic would be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It would be everyone um, on their own and you would have accidents. You'd Good have, analogy. Yeah. Uh, you would have a terrible time accomplishing anything and getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to have law and order. Those laws have to be based on our Constitution. It is the finest document in, you know, it is the finest document that man has come up with, mm -hmm. okay? Um, uh, based on Judeo-Christian principles, absolutely. And, and that's the beauty of our Constitution. You have the right to disagree, and that right is protected, Ex right? Exactly. But what you don't have the right to do is to take away the rights of others right. mm -hmm. to disagree. Mm -hmm. Or to change the or, rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, well, you can change the rules if you go by the rules. That's correct. To change the, the rules. rules. That's yeah, right. Yeah, because the principles work for everybody regardless if you're a, a Judeo-Christian person or not. That's they, correct. And the fairness. So what, what would you as a congressman say if one of your constituents gave you a call and said, look, you know, I don't know, well, you need to change that. Mm -hmm. What what would your response well, be I, to that? Well, I would listen to what they had to say. Yeah. All right. And if it made logical sense, then I would see what we could do. You know. Um, but um, uh, but we have to follow the rules. We have to follow the law. And uh, and follow I would the tell law. the person that mm -hmm. because we are a nation of laws. If we're not, then we have anarchy. We have what we see in the streets right now. We're seeing it every day. We are. We're seeing it every day. Well, based on what you saw in other countries, is our law and order, our justice system, is that what differentiates us the most, you think? We have the finest justice system and the most freedom of any country in the world. We certainly do. And as long as we're willing to stick to that, I think we'll be fine. But it's when we don't stick to that, when our political leaders um, from our cities and our towns and our counties and our states when mm. they refuse to enforce the law mm -hmm. or when they don't support law enforcement, mm -hmm. when they um, pull the rug out from under them, when they defund them, mm -hmm. all right, they demoralize them. Mm -hmm. That's not me. I don't mm -hmm. stand for that. Mm -hmm. I and will then call not stand for one. that. Right. Yeah. Who is going to protect you then? You know, That's which crazy. is why you see a, right now a huge increase in people realizing that maybe they've got to protect themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that's, but we have got to have leaders that will stand up, stand up for our Constitution, stand up for our laws, and for all these cities um, who have mayors and councils and whomever else that, uh, that plan on defunding their police department and allowing anarchy to occur, that's throw them out. crazy. Throw them out. It's crazy. Yeah. Vote them out. Get rid I, of them. It, it, as a child, you were taught to um, support your teachers and to respect your teachers. Mm -hmm. You were taught to support and respect your police officers. You were taught to, resport, re, uh, to respect the clergy. Mm -hmm. You were taught these things. What happened when... To respect each other, period. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 We've, we've lost respect. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's one thing that the military teaches you is respect. It's one thing that um, is lacking in a lot of the young people's you know, mm -hmm. actions is sure. respect. Yeah. And, um, you know, but growing up as a pastor's son, 
um, I was taught respect there too. I bet you were. Yeah. <laughs> and and you probably ate at the kids' table while the adults sat at the big table. <laughs> you, know, you know, we we see this. I, I see stuff on Facebook and different media, and teenagers like 17, 18, 19 year old kids holding up these vulgar, terrible signs and doing all these crazy things. They don't even know what they're standing for. Exactly. Right. They don't know what they're standing for. That's right. They're being led astray. And, and don't you know their mama's proud of them? You know, don't you know their mama wants to jerk them up and say, but then you look at the parents. We have a generational thing. Mm -hmm. We have a generation of, sadly, drug addiction. We have another generation of drug addiction. Mm -hmm. So if you got to, when you get to Congress, not when, you get, when you get to Congress. To Congress when? Okay, these are the things that <clears throat> we want you to look at. Small business is so very important. You yes, know that. it is. I know that. Party leadership. They will play games with you. Yes, they you know, will. Mm -hmm. and, and they will say, if you don't do this, we're not going to do this. You've got to be able to stand You've up to that. You've got to be ready. And um, term limits, how do you feel about that? I agree with term limits, yeah. absolutely. Um, I think there should be exactly the same term in the House as in the Senate. I agree. Okay. Thank you. I, mm -hmm. I think that, um, um, you know, there's a push out there to have um, just six years in the House and 12 years in the Senate. Well, when you think about that, there are 435 members of the House. Each member of the House is less than one quarter of one percent of the influence in the House. To pass a bill requires 218. Right. So that moves up to now to slightly less than half of one percent. Mm -hmm. Where for a senator, you're four times what a congressman, you know, because there's only 100 senators. Mm -hmm. So you're now one percent or two percent of anything that, that's necessary to pass. So you have to have both Senate and House on level playing field. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll give more power to one than you do to the mm -hmm. other. And, you, and that's not the way our government was designed. Mm -hmm. It's both houses, you know, are equal. And then if we're going to have term limits, then I think we also need to term limit bureaucrats as well oh, in the government. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay? Think oh, about yeah. that. Because deep state. Yeah. Deep state. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but what you're going to have then is you're going to have unelected bureaucrats that will be running the things and, and term limited congressmen just being figureheads. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And then the decisions won't be by the representatives of the people. All right. So the limits have to be long enough for the congressman to get in there and actually be able to do accomplish the job, something. accomplish right. something. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do. I want to be a congressman, a conservative congressman who pushes a conservative agenda, who can actually accomplish something, Thank who can you. work with yeah. people mm -hmm. and yeah. accomplish something. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at it, I've never held elected office, mm -hmm. ever. Now, other than I've been elected twice as a deacon in my church, <laughs> yeah. if you want to call that elected <laughs> office, yeah. But, yeah. but never held political office. But yet, I have been able to work with Congress and pass an actual law, law. that has my name on it. Yeah. All right, yeah. like Congressman Jody Heiss said, you know, who has an 88 percent success rate? Yes. Good guy. Yeah. Excellent. Good guy. Excellent yeah. conservative congressman. Yeah. Yep. He said, Andrew Clyde, as a private citizen, has done more to forward the cause of liberty than most, most politicians have done during their entire time in elected office. Right. Right. I've never even been elected. Yeah. And when you were going to war at mm -hmm. Congress, you were benefiting everybody. everybody. It wasn't just for you. That's correct. Everybody came That's up. correct. Yeah. Hundreds of small businesses and mm -hmm. individuals benefited from the Clyde Hurst Sowers Respect Act. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It gives me I know chills. it. I know it. And, <sighs> and I'll tell you something that after President Trump signed that bill on July 1st of last Whew, year, man, um, it was part of the Taxpayer First Act. Okay, um, but uh, Congressman Collins was very kind and. He actually brought me a copy of the bill. The, the president signs one one bill. Mm -hmm. All right, he uses a sharpie to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and he then there are uh, red line copies are mm -hmm. available to those who are members of the House and the mm -hmm. Senate. Mm -hmm. And Congressman Collins brought me his red line copy. Wow! Right? How about wow. that? With the sharpie that wow. said the White House. Oh, oh. So I have that. That is so cold. awesome. I'm getting really. Cold it's true. Cold. <laughs> There's another businessman who had never held elected office before. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Wow. Okay. You are going to go to Congress and you're going to do the things that you promised. How do you feel about what's going on with COVID and going back to school? What are mm -hmm. we going to do? 
As a single mom with two little girls many years ago, if you had taken my jobs away from me, my children mm -hmm. would have gone to bed mm -hmm. hungry. Mm -hmm. If you can't work and your kids can't go to school, how are we going to solve this problem? Well, I think that, um, that schools definitely need to open. Mm -hmm. All right, We need to get back to life, to mm -hmm. normal life. Mm -hmm. We need to protect our, con our economy. Um, we are giving this COVID-19 virus the opportunity to destroy our lives. Absolutely. And we're doing it voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And we have to fight it. And we have to do it by going back to being normal. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and that's what has to happen, I believe. Yeah. Well, you and I stopped at one of our favorite places to have lunch yesterday, and it was sparsely populated, wasn't it? And it just broke my heart because there it's a big restaurant with a lot of overhead, and it was sparsely populated. People mm -hmm. are afraid. And her waitress wore glasses and her mask, and her glasses and it kept... Up. It was pitiful. <laughs> it was pitiful. <laughs> yeah, it was sad. Yeah. And, and, and we want to get back to living and... and common sense. Mm -hmm. Did your parents teach you common sense? Yes, ma'am. They taught me common, common sense. sense. Wasn't always that common. Common, <laughs> well, <laughs> common sense. You know, stay clean, stay right. safe. And what did we know? do? Well, we got in the car after we might have done a little shopping, you know, something. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You know, hand sanitizer. Yeah. Right. And at the table, because mm -hmm. we had come in and mm -hmm. handled doors, hand sanitizer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, common sense. At That's this right. point, and I, she disagrees with me. I'm ready to just go out and get the stuff. You I know, want it. Just, I want it. I just let me catch <laughs> I'm it. I'm older than her. I, I don't need it. <laughs> well, and I told my son, and I've told you. Okay, I didn't tell my mama, but I said, you know, I know where I'm going. If I don't make it, I'll mm -hmm. see you when you get there. Yeah. Because yeah. I do. When we talk about freedoms, mm -hmm. I don't like this oppression. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. And this is, mm -hmm. you know, compared to what we would be under if the Marxists actually mm -hmm. take control, mm -hmm. is laughable. This mm -hmm. is nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no pandemic exception in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's you not. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. fortunately, um, our current Attorney General, uh, William Barr. That I love. I'll just say that. And I do it, too. Yes. Um, he has voiced that mm -hmm. many times. There is no pandemic exception in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. All right. So you cannot violate the Constitution or a pandemic. Mm -hmm. You can't? No, you can't. Somebody Imagine needs that. to call the governors Imagine and the mayors that. and tell them that. Well, what's, gonna ha what's it going to take? Lawsuits? The things, that we, the things that we wanted you to think about when you go to Congress, accountability of officials, term limits, going back to school, capital gains, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people my age who have done well in their lifetime want to cash out, want to sell something, but mm -hmm. the capital gains tax mm -hmm. is killing them. Mm -hmm. And you agree on a tax that wouldn't burden just the people who have worked and, and done a good job. That's right. It's like the death tax, too. Mm -hmm. You know, the death tax should Go be away, absolutely death tax. Oh, my removed. gosh. Yes. You know, yes. It, it should be uh, done away with completely. Um, I think the capital gains should be done away yeah, with completely. Absolutely. That money's already been taxed. Yeah. I think we should go to, um, instead of the current tax um, rates and, and uh, um, tax procedures and the tax returns that we now each have to do every mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. um, if we went to a consumption tax, mm -hmm. all right, kind of like we already have that uh, mechanism in place through sales tax, mm -hmm. right. but if we went to a federal consumption tax, mm -hmm. then you basically decide how much tax you pay by what you want to buy. Right. And right. the technology is in place. We all you have to do is download some we new shop software. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> We might uh, be shopping but you would never have to do a tax return ever again. <laughs> awesome. It would yeah. get the IRS out of your life completely, forever. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and, that and, is amazing. And, that would be so great to and, see America on a level playing field. Absolutely. Are and, you talking about like Neil Bortz's fair tax that he promoted? Absolutely. There, there were like two. There was a fair tax and a... There's a flat tax. Flat and tax. A, there and you a fair, go. Not a yeah. flat tax. Okay. okay. With the a flat tax, you'll still have to do a tax return. Yeah, we it'll don't just want to do a tax be a, It'll just be a, a flat tax, you know, flat tax rate. And that's rate what Herman for, Cain supported. For everyone. Right? And okay. I love Herman. But I believe in a fair tax. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that fair tax then will remove the requirement to do a tax return from every solitary citizen. Basically does away with the IRS in your life. Mm -hmm. That's the right way to do it. Oh, my God, you're so wonderful. <laughs> would you, you, for individuals or for individuals and corporations across I would start, the board? I, I would start with individuals, mm -hmm. you know, and see where we go from there. Yeah. But uh, I would certainly start with individuals. You know, the one thing I've learned 
Uh, it took six years to get the Clyde Hirschauer's Respect Act passed. <laughs> it's baby step, baby step, mm -hmm, baby mm -hmm, step, mm -hmm. you know. You so you're saying we may not live to mm -hmm. see the culmination of all this, but you keep plugging, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you young enough that when we send you to Congress, you can be there 16 years? If there was a limit of a 16-year term? Or 12 years 12 or something. Okay. I am. Yeah. I think I am. Okay. You know, l Lord willing, I'm, yeah. I'm 56 years old. Oh, yeah. You're, you're <laughs> a baby. A <laughs> Just a baby. <laughs> Quick question. Do you think there should be any age limits in Congress? You know, actually, I haven't even thought about or would that. Or the, would the term limits fix that problem, but if you're running for your second term and you're already 90, yeah. I, I just, you know... I don't want to pick on Joe Biden, but bless his heart. Yeah. You know, yeah. as bless long as he's heart. been in there, he's not the only person that's been in Congress, and in his case, of course, as vice president, that, and there's guys on my side too, you know, and I don't even identify as a Republican anymore. No, no, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. disrespect, but I'm, I'm a conservative Christian mm -hmm. independent who votes Republican because that's mm -hmm. the closest to mm -hmm. my values. Mm -hmm. But I see some people in there that, I'm not even sure they're awake. They're, they're sitting not. there with their eyes open. That's the thing I was going to mention. But they're not necessarily a, a, An iPhone will get you caught in Congress. If you're so old and decrepit and you're doing this, I see some of the young this, ones doing that. And a lot that. of them are doing that. They're not paying attention. When, when we send them to Congress, we expected them to do a certain amount of things. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it. So mm -hmm. to me, Congress, the Senate needs to be accountable to me, to you, to everybody out here because we gave you this job and we want to see you perform, and we're seeing that not happen. Mm -hmm. And that's sad, that's mm. sad. So when you go, you got this list now. <laughs> and all these little droplets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a word yeah. in the current yeah. vernacular. Yeah. You yes, know, of wisdom that, something you know. something we haven't even had time to touch on, and we're almost out of time, mental health in America. Mm -hmm. When we talk about our military, when we talk about people who um, have lost their jobs and became very depressed. My daughter committed suicide. She used a gun. I, mm -hmm. And somebody said, aren't you against guns? And I said, absolutely not. And they said, a gun killed your child. I said, no, depression killed my child. Right, that's correct. I said, that gun did not fire itself. My that's daughter right. was so sad and so depressed during Obama's reign. We lost everything. Mm -hmm. And we're starting over and she had cancer and she mm -hmm. killed herself. So I'm not against gun. Mm -hmm. The gun didn't do it. But mental right. health in America mm -hmm. is a big deal. It needs help. It is a big deal. And mental health has been defunded just like the police were defunded. Mm -hmm. They've taken money away from mental health and that should never happen. Mm -hmm. Never happen. Mm -hmm. So when you get there, we got some money for mental health. We got some money. Got to quit wasting. And I guarantee you, if you were there a day, you would see so much waste in government, and you can turn it around. Mm -hmm. You know, you and have you just call us anytime. We'll remind <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, yeah. that's we'll fair. be in Washington. You may get to sign our bond. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just keep this card. Yeah, yeah, I'm keeping that card. <laughs> keep my keep card. My card. <laughs> um, we are so honored that you took the time to be with us today. From the first interview I saw you do like when you were working on your project, your pet project last year, I, I just kept saying, this guy's real, this guy's real. Thank you. And that's what we need. We need Thank some you. really good guys. I totally support the military. I think Congress needs to be full of the military because mm -hmm. you have learned respect. You have learned to balance a budget because mm -hmm. you've made very little money in your lifetime doing that. You have had to do everything it took to keep my country free mm -hmm. for me to do what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're allowed to do the Bible here on TV. Imagine mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we do that, you know. And Could I he read this, read us out with that? Um, I'm sure he'll yeah, be familiar will you with that. Read that real quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you read it? Oh, I can. Okay. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this oath freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office up on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Yeah! Absolutely. <laughs> All right, that is a great go. We'll see y'all again soon. Check out Andrew Clyde. Go to his Facebook page. Support him. Help him. Be there for him. He needs your support and we expect you to help us too. We'll see you again soon. Only on ETC. You gave me a different